Hello, Jim here. Uh, I was meant to film a nice sort of arty video or whatever, but I'm driving up to the lakes and uh, I was just going to go and check on some reliable mushroom spots. It's only the middle of July, so mushroom season hasn't really kicked off yet, but we've had lots of rainfall and lots of, uh, uh, yeah, the, the conditions feel right, basically. Uh, full moon as well the other day, so everything's sort of triggered. Uh, and I've done my first bit of lay-by foraging. Uh, I am on a road, so I might have to jump out of the way in a second. Um, but I have found some amazing porcini. So I'm just going to spin you around. Oh yeah, try not to get run over Jimbo. Look at that, there's the one I jumped out to have a look at. Little slug on there, we'll get rid of that. Look at that, a beauty. Absolute beauty. Um, because I'm by a road, I'm going to jump out of the way, but there's a few more looking around. Where did I see them? The one that I saw. Ah, there we go. There's another one. And there's another monster as well. So I'm going to get these trimmed up, put in my basket, into the back of the van, and then I'll start the video proper soon. See you in a sec. Hello, me again, Jim from Forage Box, Forage Box TV. Uh, two things have happened since we last spoke. One, uh, I found another 20 or so porcini, so I'll show you a nice clip of that there in the back of my van at the moment. The second one is I've come out packing light, just a water bottle and a basket, uh, but I've lost my microphone wind protector thing, so if the sound quality is poor, I apologise. It actually blew away in the wind, which is a great deal of help, isn't it? Um, I'm in a sort of nameless part of the South Lakes, and uh, I've come to a reliable spot. Now, this isn't a plant. I haven't actually come here before, uh, before doing this shot, but I can already see. You see, I've got a big smile on my face. It's very exciting. Down in the undergrowth already, we've got some absolute monster porcini. Can you see? Look at these. I promise you I've not planted these, I've not wreckied this beforehand, I've literally just got the camera, pointed it in my face, and there we go. Uh, I'm going to spend the next five minutes or so uh, picking these, I think. It's very exciting, isn't it? And then I'm going to cook them up for me tea. I'm having a camp out tonight. Um, you know, clear the head and all that, pointing the camera in my face a couple of times, but not too much. Uh, but you'll be with me for the exciting bits. So probably cut to some arty shots of me slicing mushrooms or something. Bloody camera fell over, didn't it? How about that for pristine? Look at that. There we go. A couple of biggies. Some of them are a bit squidgy, but they'll dry out nicely. There he is. There's another one. A bit older, hanging out over there. Let's see what else I can get. Very exciting though. Perhaps you're wondering what we're looking at here. These are beech trees. You can see all the beech leaves on the floor. And this is a perfect environment for all sorts of things. I'm hoping for some chanterelle, but in lieu of that, I would definitely take porcini. Uh, probably on a par in terms of culinary value. I found a different type of mushroom. It's the first one I've found this year of this type. This is a blusher. I'm going to show you how to ID it in a second. So very, very carefully pull this out. There we go. Beautiful gilled mushroom. Can you see a few bits of a few insects, but that's okay. Can you see why it's called the blusher? So where there's damage, I don't get good focus, where it's damage, there's a, a nice red tinge to it. It's a member of the uh, Amanita family, so closely related to Fly Agaric. And the big giveaway as well is on, you're never going to be able to see it on this camera, Jimbo, on the skirt, which is this little dangly bit of membrane here, 
you've got the striations, the imprint from where it's held against the cap. Now I can confirm that's the case. I don't know whether you can see that as well, but it's a choice edible. It's a really delicious one. Uh, it's one that I, uh, I've seen a few people being a bit dismissive of, but that's usually the way in the foraging world at the moment. Um, I think it's absolutely gorgeous, well worth our time, so I'm going to take this as well. Um, it will require a lot of cooking, unlike the porcini, so I'm going to keep it at a different end uh, of my basket. I'm actually going to clean it up a little bit, I didn't realise quite how much it was. Um, but they do grow in numbers, so I'm going to have a good old scout around in the undergrowth just over here. There we go, another one, the blusher. Well, big bag on. You find me in the woods that I'm going to spend the night in. Currently walking up quite a steep hill with my big heavy bag on and my basket. I've got a few shrooms in there from earlier. I'm just going to, I've been in these woods many, many times before. And I'm currently trying to find my favourite place to camp. So I'll do that, dump my bag, then head to my reliable spots. I'm hoping that, uh, yeah, I'm hoping that given, given the success of all the lovely porcini and bits and bobs before, that this wood, which never fails to deliver, will also produce the goods. Uh, just a, a look at my bag. It's big, it's got all my bits and bobs in. Got a slightly unusual camp or setup tonight. I'll Cover that later in the video, won't I? Anyway, see you after these arty shots. Well, here it is, campers, in the spot for the night. I'm going to do a little tarp here with my, uh, it's called a jungle hammock, so it's actually a tent as well as a hammock, and I'm going to set that up on the floor and have a lying down night rather than suspended in the trees, as I am uh, quite often known to do. Uh, it's nice and flat. You can see it gets a lot steeper up that direction. Uh, but that's where the mushrooms are, so I will be heading up there in just a second. Uh, I hope you'll join me. Hmm, well, I'll level with you viewers. It's pretty lean out here. Not found a single thing. I'm walking for 20 minutes odd. 20 odd minutes. Uh, the woods are changing a little bit. You can see a fair few oak trees, but there's lots of silver birch around and beech trees are sort of down in this little lump here. So I'm gonna check this space out. Otherwise, I might have to go and revert to the stuff that I've got in the basket. Just a sneak peek of the stuff there. It's still a decent feast, I just I was hoping to build on my haul from before. Sometimes you just have to know when you're beaten. I scoured these woods with my tick friends here and uh, there's nothing. Not a single mushroom, edible or otherwise. And uh, it's amazing. I'm only a few short miles away from where I found my hall before. There were lots of different mushrooms there and uh, yeah, shows how small, how short the seasons and the sensitivity of mushrooms and the infrequency of them, which is what makes them so exciting, I guess. Anyway, I've got enough from before, so I'm not too disappointed. And um, I need to set up my camp. 
I'm tempted by a hammock camp after all, you know. But I think I'm going to be disciplined and uh, use the kit that I brought, so I haven't carried it for nothing. Uh, I'm probably going to stick you on the old, uh, what's it called, time lapse uh, from this angle and you'll be able to see my camp get set up. That's exciting, isn't it? Well, here you go. The view from my bed. Not a bad one. And just in case you were missing me, here I am. Got the, I guess anyone's wondering, Gear Fanatics. The DD uh, Super Light Tarp, held up with walking poles. Um, this one's actually been in the wars recently, so it does need fixing. Uh, I've got the Alpkit cloud base because it's summer. Nice squidgy lightweight thing. I've got the... what's this? This is part of the Dutch Army minus 40 outdoorsy bushcrafty thing. Uh, it's obviously not going to be minus 40, it's t-shirt weather, but I like having it. This is the DD uh, jungle uh, hammock, which also, as you can see with the poles, uh, the poles also mean that it can be a tent, or it's a tent dangling from a tree, and many other ways as well. Uh, I'm trying it like this this evening because I'm not using a fly sheet, so I've got the uh, the midgy protector, the mosquito net, and then I've just got this above me because I want to be able to see this in the morning. And no doubt you'll be on that adventure with me as and when it happens. Right, tea is uh, not too far off, um, but I'm going to treat myself to a little... Um, let's call it a snack, an amuse-bouche, whatever you want to call it, a canopy. Uh, I'm going to show you what I'm doing now. Okay, so my best porcini from uh, my basket uh, is here. I'm going to make porcini carpaccio. What you need, one plate, one mushroom, bit of olive oil, bit of salt and a sharp knife. Okay, so you take your sharpest blade, now you'll see there's a little bit of a tough stem on this one. So I'm going to slice that off very neatly until I've got a nice immaculate porcini there. I'm going to pop that into the pan for later. I also, because I'm eating this raw, I want to make sure this is completely clear of any debris, any bugs, any bits from the basket, any of that sort of stuff. And whilst it looks a little bit sluggy to on top, to be honest, that's just reassuring to say how delicious it is. That's obviously not a rule of thumb. I believe slugs are quite partial to a death cap as well, but there you go. Uh, and all I'm going to do, guys, is finally slice this. Now, can you see? That one maybe needs a little bit finer slicing. Oh. Doesn't get much better than that. And then arrange as flat as possible. You can see how it's not changed colour as well, it's an important ID feature. There you go. You don't have to look pretty when you're in the woods. And then taking my olive oil. Good olive oil as well, of course. Absolutely drench it and gorgeous olive oil and then a good bit of sea salt here sprinkled all over the top, do your best salt bay impression there it goes and then, do you know what, seeing as we're in the woods I thought it might be quite nice to garnish it with a little bit of wood sorrel wood sorrel, member of the oxalis family, absolutely brilliant uh, delicious, classic master chef ingredient. Don't watch those programs, but I'm led to believe they use it quite a lot. And it's got a lovely sort of tart apple flavour. You could use, I guess, you could use yarrow or parsley or uh, I don't know, ground elder, whatever it is. But there you go. How about that? Not bad for something that I found in the woods. Now, 
the taste test. I'm going to scroll you up. Dun, 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 dun. Hello. Nice big meaty bit. Mmm. The mushroomy, the umami, the mushroomy, the saltiness, the olive oil, it's perfect. And it cost me a little bit of, a little bit of salt, a little bit of oil. And this is Michelin star gourmet food. Cheers. Righty ho, time to do some cooking. Olive oil. First thing I'm going to put in is the blusher mushroom from before. This will need quite thorough cooking. So I think, how will we do this? We'll do chunks at the end. Oh, just the sound of mushrooms hissing in oil. There it goes. We also found a scarlatina belit. This is the one when you slice it. Let's see if it does it for us now. It slowly goes blue, can you see? And that blue colour, uh, unfortunately it doesn't get saved in cooking, but what we have got is uh, another tasty, tasty belit mushroom. A pacini. I'm going with just the tough stems to start with, just because I want them to soften a little bit. Yeah, not bad, eh? And into there, I've got these little weird packets from uh, uh, recipe boxes from my parents in law. That's paprika. The whole packet can go in there. These are chili flakes. And again, sprinkle them straight in. No mucking about here. Some mustard. Oh, the smell is sublime. Just added a tiny bit of water. Just so it doesn't burn on the bottom. And it'll soon, soon start softening. Oh, that smells great. There's also this funny little chicken stock mix. I figure in lieu of any roadkill on my way here, this is absolutely fine. and. I'm not really eating much in the way of non-wild meat at the moment, just because I've got access to so much of it, but I don't want it to have gone to waste and it's just sitting in the cupboard from not being used elsewhere, so there it goes. I think for now, guys, we'll it on. It smells fantastic. So I've added some porcini and I'm also going to add some more sachet stuff. This is honey. Oh yeah, get that all in there. So a bit of honey, bit of mustard, bit of paprika, bit of chicken. Not a bad selection, I'd say. A good old switch round. I don't need the puccini to cook too much, but I quite like them to be a bit tender as well. So I reckon we're nearly there. Let's have a look. See, we've got bubbles, which is exactly what we want. And into there, we're going to put homegrown boiled potatoes because it's the 1950s. I'll make sure I don't spill these everywhere. So I just want them warming through. Sprig of mint probably isn't required, is it? So once they're warmed through, that is my meal for the day, really.
Mm. Well, ladies and G's, that was dinner. Didn't really talk about what it was, really, but porcini and paprika cooked in that way is quite a, it feels quite Hungarian. Maybe you could call it goulash. Anyway, whatever it was, it was great. Now, matters at hand. <sighs> Cheers. I'm gonna sit and admire my woodland surroundings without pointing a camera in my face, even though I do enjoy doing this. Um, not doing much of an update on this one, just saying thanks for being, uh, well, for watching to this point. The next time you see me, I'll be saying goodnight, or waking up in the morning, or something that wraps this whole video up, and then I'll be going home. Cheers. Morning campers. How are we doing? That's probably it. Yeah, we're gonna go to the beach to do a recce for uh, an event I'm running tomorrow. Slept well, it rained a lot. That's pretty much it. Hello, me again. I said that it would be uh, the last you'd hear of me when I when we last spoke, but walking down to the van, and I've actually managed to find a mushroom in these woods, so uh, we'll have a look at it. It's not particularly uh, ready, as it were, or, or in its prime. You see this, and indeed this, but we'll have a look at this one. This is Chicken of the Woods. Now, Chicken of the Woods is a classic Facebook foraging group excitement piece. Um, this one is past its best. I'm not going to uh, damage it too much, but I'll break this bit off in a second. First thing to note is that it's a lovely sort of tiered, uh, I guess it looks like a bracket fungi, you could call it that. Um, this one's a bit sort of flat and lumpy. Usually you get them growing right the way out here. Uh, and this is a yew tree. Well, it was a yew tree. It's died by the looks of things. Oh, there's a little bit hanging out up there. Um, now, there used to be... I'm still next to it. There used to be a thought that the uh, chicken of the woods growing on, or indeed any mushrooms growing on yew tree, but particularly chicken of the woods growing on yew trees, uh, would absorb some of the toxins because yew is a poisonous tree, or it's a poisonous plant, except for uh, one very small part of it, which I'll cover in a, another video. Um, but that's been largely debunked recently. So actually, uh, you could eat this perfectly happily off here. The big thing to note is probably you don't want to eat tons and tons of this, but people who get uh, chicken of the woods poisoning, or reported poisoning, is because they pick it and don't cook it enough. You do have to treat this like chicken, cook it quite a lot. It's not just a quick flash fry uh, in a pan. So actually, a lot of those poisonings may have been picked from uh, a yew tree, but it wouldn't have been because of the fact that it was growing on a yew tree. So that's uh, hopefully enough to sort of um, uh, inspire you to do that. It's a very easy mushroom to ID because of its bright yellow colour, usually when it's uh, absolutely prime. And the big thing is if it's dry on the outside, it's going to be dry on the inside and therefore past its best. I guess you could pick this for a stock. I'll break a tiny little bit off. You can see this is white on the inside. Still smells all right. It would make a decent-ish decent, decent -ish stock. But to be honest, it's so dry. This is definitely a couple of months old now. Uh, we've had some weird dry weather and weird wet weather. So we'll leave this one here. But uh, the thing is, don't pick chicken of the woods uh, when it's too old because it will just be a complete anticlimax. Really, what you want to do is you want to find it when it's in its lovely soft yellow form where this gap where I've broken it off, this would be yellow, be a little bit damp. You can actually feel the moisture on your fingers and then cook it really, really well. Chicken of the Woods Nuggets is one of my favourites, but I know people who uh, cook it into things like Thai green curries or use it in place of chicken in uh, other dishes like that. And it works very well. Doesn't taste of chicken. It's got a similar texture, I guess, to chicken. Um, quite why it's been called Chicken of the Woods. Other than that, I'm not sure, but there you go. Cool.